Chemos Fiesta held under the theme Leave No One Behind, better production, better nutrition, and a better environment for all, aimed to change public practices and habits toward consuming more locally grown crops, including CMOS, by showcasing a diverse range of value-added CMOS commodities. Over 20 CMOS processors, farmers and schools displayed products such as CMOS powders, ice pops, soaps and cakes at the event, which was held in honor of World Food Day on Sunday, October 16, 2022 in Fordow Denry. Scott's more started um, pretty much um, from Wow, our mom passed away, my brother and myself, and it's a family run business. So it's my, my girlfriend, myself, my brother. Um, and our mom passed away with chronic diabetes about three years ago. Now, in doing this product, we did it for leisurely purposes, just to enjoy CMOS. And we found that she, it benefited her in, in such a way where it kept her lively, it gave her more energy, and her passing it made, made us aware that we wanted to inject more homes and families with such a benefit from the CMOS itself, having carried so much minerals and vitamins within itself. So we created our CMOS to inspire homes, to inspire our family, our friends, um, based upon their diets, their, their um, recommendations, their lifestyle, everything to do with regards to how they live their daily life. And we came up with the concepts to just inspire more, just to be something different but create it on a premium level rather than just CMOS. So hence why we come up with over, I think we have got like over 70 flavors now in CMOS. Yeah, and we got quite a few, but everything is definitely gained or aimed at keeping you healthier, keeping you more energized and just to taste better. Uh, moving in the next five years, hopefully we could be around yeah, to serve our public people. Yeah, this, is, this should be good competition for all of us. We should be inspired by each other's progress, by each other's efforts, and, and work with that, and help each other in some way. Because if I could see somebody else who may want, need to help refining their product a little better, I'll be more happy than to give them a little added um, um, help and um, assistance from myself. Um, but this is just to help our people know what's available, what we could do locally, that what we could bring in through the products that we could we, we find around ourselves, right around our place. So far, the awareness, I don't know for others, but for us, for the time we got here about eight, nine, we've not stopped selling. Um, our customers know us for the last five years. We've been doing such a great thing in regards to tailoring products for their needs, for their diet, for their lifestyle. And they learned to trust us over some time. And so far, the people here, they've shown us love, they've shown us trust. And what else better than trust? We build a family through our homes and extend it through outside to your homes. My name is Solange Martelli, the business is Martelli's Ocean Gardens. We are based in Kako View Fort and we've been in operation for about two years now. Um, essentially, we do the dried sea moss in its um, golden form. We have the powders. We also have some muffins that we came out with recently. It's got the bananas, raisins, everything. And our newest one, which is the cocoa mix. Um, well, it's got chocolate, our local cocoa, actually. And all you do is you add your water. It has the spices, it has milk, it has everything already. Um, we have the other flavors like the turmeric, ginger, moringa, all of them. And we also have the purple powder, which is said to be even more nutritious than those flavors as well. So yeah, so that's essentially us. We also have the infused scrubs, um, so face and body, so in the forms of lavender and also cinnamon. Uh, my family has been in CMOS for like 30 years now. Um, so recently we decided, you know, it's time to make a legacy for ourselves, right? So we branched out and we're now doing our own thing. And we figured, you know, the powder CMOS is becoming something so um, important nowadays because everybody has a busy schedule. You want to get this and get on the run. So, you know, we figured like that's the best option. So we've been trying to enhance that and continue to improve as time goes by. Yeah, especially for the um, chocolate mix because you have your cocoa tea right there. You just put your, your spoons in your water and that's it and you're ready to consume. So people are very receptive to it. So it's, it's easier, it's making everything more convenient. So of course people will gravitate towards that. <laughs> well, it's a fun experience to learn about 
how much CMOS can impact us, what it's used for. I didn't know there was a variety of stuff you could do with it. I never liked it. Um, this event made me come out of my bubble and try new stuff. And I'm camera shy. And now it's like getting me to raise my confidence and be more out there. So we, it was mainly sweet dishes. We had, for example, a banana bread with simos, which I made. Um, so lot quickly, um, we did um, simos tarts. We had cheesecake. We had chocolate bars. It's vegan, and we had cookies as well. One dollar minute massage yourself. You will feel everything included. Simos. It was basically a normal recipe, and you just include the simos in it. It's very important to celebrate World Food Day because food in itself is a very important commodity. I mean, the human body, on normal circumstances, will eat about three times a day, and uh, that's, that means it's an important part of our daily lives. So it, it, it is worthy of the attention given to it to ensure that the public is aware of food security, the agencies responsible and stakeholders responsible are aware of it, and they can all work together to the good of national food security and food nutrition. Well, at the moment. Cardi has no current projects, but what we're really doing right now, we're looking at the scientific end of the CMOS. We have left the agro-processing and value chain development to the entrepreneurs, but um, we are looking at the identification of the different types of CMOS, characterization of it in terms of um, how, how can you differentiate one from the other, and because members of the public, we realize, are not familiar how to separate or how to identify or differentiate between a CMOS and a seaweed, we try to demonstrate that they're for them here in this setting. Um, however, there is some ongoing um, discussion in looking at the, the nutritive and health safety component of the CMOS, uh, which is something that the, the Cardi St. Lucia is, is, is looking at. But there are some running discussions, or should I say, um, reported issues that, that may have to be looked into. So Cardi at the moment is more looking at the scientific end, and we're hoping to look into or investigate some of the um, reports about some of the um, the health safety issues surrounding CMOS production and CMOS processing. Very excellent products. Very, and I was happy to see the schools there, which speaks to succession planning and the youth in agriculture, because the youth are the next generation of the communities, and we have to have them participate in what we're doing. So I was happy to see the secondary schools there. I think I saw the um, Cassis Company Secondary School. As the um, I think I also saw the um, Corim Secondary School. Which is good to see that. I saw some youth groups. I saw some. I saw Helen Daughters. It speaks to social inclusiveness, so I was very happy to see that there's a wide procession of inclusivity in this in this um, festival of Fiesta. Okay, the SNODB, as you know, is an institution which is owned by the government of Saint Lucia, and this event here today is sponsored or is organized by the Ministry of Agriculture. We were approached by the ministry to participate in this event as a sponsor, and we thought, hey, why not? I mean, the CMOS industry is beginning to take root. We know the number of farmers who are seeking to export CMOS, and so we thought it was an opportunity to come here today to provide some support to this sector. But more than that, we are here because the St. Lucia Development Bank has a lot to offer the St. Lucian public. The agricultural sector, the CMOS, you know, farmers, and solutions generally so we thought you know here is an opportunity for us to give some visibility to the SLDB. We under the climate financing facility which we have which we call the CAF we provide financing for farmers if they want to go into greenhouse production we would finance the greenhouses and all the infrastructure that is required for that we would fund the seeds we know there are some heat resistant seeds and crops and so on so we fund this also. We do soil stabilization, we do drainage, uh, we assist in the export of produce. So generally any, any, any event, any, any, any activity related to agriculture, whether it be the whole question of rainwater harvesting to feed the irrigation systems, the bank would be interested in projects of this nature. Well, with, with respect to the CMOS farmers, 
it is relatively new to us. We are still learning the ropes as it relates to the whole question of how CMOX is cultivated and prepared. But it's a sector we will be open to because of the fact that it has the opportunity to generate foreign exchange for the SLDB. We know the country relies on tourism heavily, but there is need for diversification. And so we would go all out to assist the farmers. Uh, there may be occasions when they need to may perhaps uh, construct drying facilities. I have driven around and see the farmers having the sea moss exposed on the ground, on plastic, you know, and so on. And this may not be good for the quality of the sea moss. And so we would want to encourage them to utilize, you know, perhaps dryers that are more sophisticated because we know the international market is very sensitive. And so we can offer financing in these areas the whole question of the cultivation of the sea moss, whatever implements they require to do that, we can provide funding in that area. When I walked around also, some of the, the, the persons here, I note they have bottled you know, some of the produce and they've taken a marker and just wrote what is in there. We can assist them in getting proper labels, even the whole labeling machines and so on. So there is a wide array of opportunities that are available to them if they come to the SNDB. Hey, um, the Jeff Stubbins Coast Project area is from Denry into Lavery. And one of the objectives of the project is to assist um, people with their livelihoods, so from CMOS farmers to agro-processors, um, to utilize the resources of the ecosystems and for their livelihoods. So CMOS is featuring prominently today and along the southeast coast you have many areas in Poile, um, in the view fort, in Labry where there are many um, CMOS farms. So we were asked to come in to show our support um, for the activity today and to basically explain to people um, the activities of the Southeast Coast project, you know, to the patrons there this afternoon. Okay, well, one of the things that we can do is to test the CMOS number one um, because if exporting CMOS it has to be tested. So what we're hoping is that through our, the, the, our lab at Union, well I mean the Michigan Agriculture's lab in Union, um, they can begin to test the CMOS for the farmers. Um, secondly, in terms of the um, production of the CMOS, um, there are good practices that you know, need to be followed and the project can assist in you know, training our CMOS farmers, building capacity within the, um, the sector um, for the production. And thirdly, in terms of livelihoods as well, um, we can train people to actually process the CMOS so that they can be able to produce the different products that you have um, from, from CMOS, so the drinks, um, I heard there's gummy bears, you have um, ice cream, um, cheesecake, you know, and, 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 it, and the list goes on. Okay. Definitely it is, it is an area that we can use to protect our food security. Um, by getting our farmers to produce um, more of the CMOS, and getting more people involved, um, and meeting the standards that are required um, for exports, as well as um, for selling products locally in St. Lucia. Um, we can train our CMOS farmers, um, get them to become involved in the processing, and therefore, you know, um, look towards, you know, securing our food security in St. Lucia. The CMOS Fiesta also saw the official launch of the Ministry of Agriculture's very own CMOS catalog, which included CMOS-infused recipes, as well as a compilation of CMOS processors and their products. The use of CMOS as an alternative food thickener and emulsifier is growing in popularity in St. Lucia and around the world because it is naturally abundant in nutrients like vitamin K, iron, iodine, magnesium and calcium. I'm very happy to be here. I, I never realized we, we had so many byproducts um, of CMOS, you know, I mean, I sample so many products and there are other products right. like soaps so and right creams and so on. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for St. Lucians to, um, to see what can be done. I mean, um, the creativity, the oils and the, the rubs and the creams and so on um, speaks to the ability of St. Lucians to, to be entrepreneurs but also to use a local product and, and multiply its benefits. So I'm very pleased um, with what I've seen here today. Well, clearly, um, St. Lucians use so many products, and most of these products are imported. And we have CMOS with, with, with minerals and, and, and lots of um, nutrition, nutrition benefits for, for us as, as, as human beings. 
as in Lucian's. So it's very important for us, I think, to, to use even more of it. Um, it's, it's a food, actually, with, with lots of nutrients and so on, um, minerals. And I, I'm just thrilled with the way um, students and, and, and other people have, have taken this and made cakes out of it. You know, um, ice cream and so many products that can be used. Um, so I think in terms of the health benefits, the, the, the professionals, the experts have told us, the nutritionists have told us that CMOS is very good for us. Okay? And I want to encourage everyone to, to use even more CMOS. Because food really is, is part of it's, it's part of the equation which we, 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 we must recognize adds to longevity, adds to healthy living, adds to good life. And um, it's important to understand the role that food plays in our lives and, and, and the importance of food for good health. So World Food Day is always a very important day and I'm pleased that we are focusing on CMOS because of the tremendous opportunities um, CMOS presents CMOS present us with so many opportunities for food and different kinds of food. So World Food Day is very important and I'm happy to be here to celebrate um, with the Ministry of Agriculture and so on. What a wonderful job you have done today. I'm very happy. Yeah. While there are still significant disparities in food supplies, access to food and food affordability, the Agriculture Ministry's goal is to ensure that the entire nation has a safety net in place to guarantee adequate food is available for all citizens to live a healthy life. So, World Food Day, since the founding of that organization in 1945, we have commemorated World Food Day in celebration of its importance to food and hunger and food and nutrition security globally. We recognize the inequality in food supplies and access to food and food affordability. So therefore it is fitting that we reflect on the strides and progress made towards those goals, especially the Sustainable Development Goal, SDG 1, Zero Hunger. And it is in that light that we strive to achieve and attain those goals. And the theme this year is leaving no one behind. And St. Lucia aims to leave no one behind ensure that there is a safety net that is spread around and cast for everybody, inclusive of everybody, that they receive the adequate portions of food required for a healthy and quality life. But the ministry has been strategic in its approach. You would have realized generally that we are trying to increase local demand and reduce on the food import bill. Earlier in the year, we had a banana festival in terms of seeing what can be done with the fruit innovatively. So you would have seen products like banana cake, banana paper and the like. Then we went to our mango festival and the same was done, inclusive of catalogs for both of these products. And of course now CMOS. CMOS is doing quite well economically in St. Lucia, averaging this year over $7 million. So it is important to focus on CMOS, um, promote CMOS, especially quality CMOS, in keeping with the standards that is um, expected for us to export CMOS at this time. So CMOS is big for St. Lucia and we want to ensure that it remains in, in focus and on the table. I have personally gone through all the tents and the response is tremendous. They are happy with the support that the Ministry of Agriculture is giving to CMOS and CMOS promotion. Also, we have system support agencies like Export St. Lucia there to help in the promoting of CMOS and other agencies, CADI, to help with other aspects. So in that light, they are most pleased with the support and the turnout today. The CMOS Fiesta, according to the Agriculture Minister Honorable Alfred Prosper, is part of the Ministry's mandate to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal 2 of increasing food security by ensuring that the public consumes local healthy foods. Well, One Food Day is a UN activity and every year we know around this time, 16th of October, we celebrate that day and the name food tells us Every nation has to eat. Every nation is dependent on food. But more importantly, availability of food, nutritious foods, that will all result in, health, in a healthy nation, a healthy population. So today I'm very excited, I'm very happy to see that we are hosting a CMOS festival as part of World Food Day. And some people may ask, why CMOS? 
Simos is also a very important diet. It very, it's very nutritious. But more significantly, it is very, very, um, it creates a big impact on the rural population. We know currently we have more than 400 persons involved in the production of CMOS. We have about 65 persons who are directly involved in the export of CMOS. It is a growing industry and as I said it is very very important for the rural populace and our ministry considering the importance and value of this subsector for them um, the, in the agricultural sector we thought it was a very good activity today to really bring them together and I just went around visiting the booths and I saw the many byproducts that are produced from CMOS. I saw the soup, I saw the gels, I saw the drinks, I saw the creams, I saw the spices. My concern is a lot of them are still operating from their home but they have not taken the products to the next level where all of what or if not most of what we see there it would have been good for us to be able to go to the supermarket shelves or to the small shops and be able to access them but i can tell you from my discussion with them there are challenges in terms of the branding in terms of the the marketing and uh, other challenges in financial resources because if we have to really benefit from the value added from those byproducts we need to take it to the supermarket shelves and then consider export. So I would like to see the soaps and all the other products that I viewed there in terms of what I saw a while ago, take it to the next level. And that is where the ministry, the government, understanding the value of that. Our government, the St. Lucia um, Labour Party government, approved $300,000 to assist the Simos farmers with promotion, marketing, branding. But we really want to get the other entities of government to come in, like Bureau of Standards, the NADAF facility, to be able to test those products and to ensure that we have a brand, a brand of products that can be sold outside of St. Lucia. And that would help our country in terms of value added, the impact on the livelihoods of the, of the rural population, the persons who have to depend on it for support, our families, and you know most of the production of Simo starts from Prale all the way to Labri. So that, that's imagine the amount of people who are actually benefiting from it. And our government is really concerned about it. But what we really want to see is more processing of the raw material. We are being told that our Simos has gone as far as Dubai. And it has become very popular in a lot of the other con island countries in the world. We need to take advantage of it. We need to capitalize on it. There's a lot of fragmentation in terms of the various prices, the quality and so on. We need to work on it. I have been engaging the CMOS associations in recent times, finding out what are the concerns, but I really want to see more processing, more byproducts being developed from the raw material. And today is really a starting point for us to see what are the byproducts of CMOS. And now we can take it to the next level with the support of government, with the support of the ministry and all the stakeholders coming together to create that brand that we can see it's St. Lucian made products from our CMOS, a country that is producing the best CMOS in the world. So I'm very excited today. I see we have quite a number of persons displaying their products and I really hope that the event today, given the very good weather that we are experiencing now, I'm hoping that as part of World Food Day 2022, this activity today will be it's significant for us to really push this industry and to ensure that the livelihoods of our farmers in the in the industry continue to be very continue to see a positive impact and for us to be able to gain value from the products and to really get into the processing aspect of it to really get it on the supermarket shelves to get it in the stores so every time we walk we can say can i get some simos gel we know we can get it in the supermarket shelves and people from outside can say okay i need to get it where can i get it this is what this industry is all about and i'm hoping that we can continue to work hard get together with everybody all the stakeholders coming together and to make it happen yes and food security as we all know i've always been focused on ensuring that our country is moving in the direction that we should be heading in terms of our food security we are working on a strategy although 
I am hoping that it can come out soon. But a strategy and action plan for food security in St. Lucia is very, very critical. And I'm hoping that CMOS, as we know, will be one of those components that will really boost our food security drive. We know CMOS, the value in terms of the nutritional value and all in terms of health. We must see and will continue to see CMOS as been contributing immensely to our food security drive in terms of not just producing the raw material, but all of the good things, the byproducts that can come from the raw material. These are things that we can eat. <clears throat> These are products we can drink. All of that will and will continue to help us achieve our food security agenda for St. Lucia. There are, there are a number of challenges in the ministry, not just the ministry, our farmers, our fishers, our CMOS producers, all of those persons who are making a contribution towards food security. There are challenges of climate change, for example. We didn't. We, we, it's a natural phenomenon. And we have to deal with it. We have to put measures in place to build that level of resilience to the agricultural sector so the impacts of climate change will be less. We also have to understand <clears throat> That it is one thing to say, let's push and increase our food production, but our farmers need the market. The markets must be consistent. They must be able to get a good price for the market. We need to bring in new technology into the sector. And I always say, we have to change the way we do things. We have to think, begin thinking outside of the box because the entire world is changing. And so, to answer your question, I believe that <clears throat> our ministry must have targets in terms of how are we going to reduce our food import bill? What percentage of our country you think should be climate smart agriculture? So we can deal with the whole issues of climate change and so on. What support are the farmers do we give to the farmers, the fishers, the persons in the CMOS industry, the honey subsector, the poultry sector? What sort of support we can give them as a government? Because at the end of the day, we want to reduce the cost of production. But we also have to look at what new technologies that we can bring into the sector to encourage our young folks, our younger people to come in and to say, now I've seen a change in this sector. Things are a lot easier to be done because you have a lot of machinery that can do a lot of things that manual labor would be required to do. What can we do? Now is the time I can come in. And I also want to see more investments in agriculture. I want to see the private sector getting involved in the, in the agricultural sector and invest because this is the pillar of our country without food a country will not be able to survive and i know we can say that we are doing well so far but i believe there is still a lot more to be done and so it's a challenge but we have to head in that direction to achieve our goals of reaching our food security targets and ensuring that we are self-sufficient in what we grow. We have to encourage people to grow what they eat and to eat what they grow.